All right, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. We warmly welcome you to the fifth session of the world's first virtual implant expo. We are extremely sorry. There, is a, there was a slight technical glitch and, and hence we had to start this session a little late. My name is Ruben Lobo and on behalf of Team Dentist Channel dot online, I warmly welcome you to this presentation. We now have with us a very special speaker all the way from the city of those beautiful people who've made ancient history strong and the ones that have made history. Yes, I'm talking about the next speaker for today, Dr. Ahmed Fami. Dr. Ahmed Fami is an assistant professor for prosthodontics and implantology at the Cairo University. He's a course coordinator for current lectures of prosthodontics for PhD students at the University of Cairo. He's a course director for clinical applications of implantology prosthodontics master's degree in Cairo University. He's a course director for clinical application of implants in MRD Future University. He's a course director and a coordinator for master, master implantology course in the Cairo University. Ladies and gentlemen, presenting to you, Dr. Ahmed Fami. Good morning, doctors. And uh, I am Dr. Ahmed Fahmi. Uh, today, uh, we talking about the PRF. Uh, I think uh, all doctors now, uh, you know well, what is the meaning of PRF? PRF, it's a place this rich pipeline. But the question, what are the nature of the PRF? And the how can they are used in implant dentistry? Can be I use the PRF as a cone graft, or can be used as a membrane instead of normal membrane, or can be used in connective tissue graft? After this session, I will know what is the difference between every using for different type of PRF and how can be used as a cone graft or a membrane. The PRF or platelet rich fibrin is a second generation platelets concentration. The first generation is PRP. The PRF is prepared from centrifuge blood, but without anticoagulant. What is the difference between PRF and PRP? PRP is a first generation of platelets concentration, but the blood is collected in tube with anticoagulant with thrombin. The PRF, it is a blood collected in plant tube. Plant tube, it's meaning that no thrombin. PRF, it is was first developed in France by Chacron at 2000, 2006. So what is the protocol of the PRF? The PRF, the PRF, it is simply, it is a blood sample is taking without anticoagulant in tube, 10 millimeter tube, which are immediately centrifuged. The word, if it, the word immediately, it means immediately, because the tube don't, don't contain anticoagulant, don't contain thrombin. So when we take the blood sample from the patient, you must be immediately inserted in centrifuge machine at speed of 3000 RPM for 13 minutes. What's happened? It's a production protocol attempted to accumulate platelets and release what is known by cytokines, or in other words, it relieve what it called is growth factor in fibrin growth. This is the sample is taken, and this is a centrifuge machine introduced by Chakram. Can you see this tube? This tube have red top. What is the meaning of red top? Red top, it's meaning it plan, no thrombin, no anticoagulant. So the big difference between the different tube is the plan is red in the top. It is no anticoagulant. And after 13 minutes, for the speed of 3000 RPM, this is the final shape we can be collected. This is in the middle part. This is PRF. And what is this? This is 
pure serum. This is acidular plasma. Can I use this acidular plasma? It's perfectly used. It's perfect to mixing with bone. It is perfect. We injected in the infected socket. And what is the last part? It is red corpuscles. I don't need it. The most important part, if you will be using PRF, that the 80% of cytokines, it will be accumulated in the lower part of piperine clot mainly at the junction between the red corpuscles and the PRF clot itself. So, if you're talking PRF and talking with cytokines or gross factors, we're talking about this part, the lower part of the platelet rich piperin, which is connected with the red corpuscles. The 80% of cytokines and the 80% of the gross factor is collected at this part. So the most important step when we're talking about the PRF and we take from the tube, we must be take this part. We must be cutting with this red corpuscles part. Just only first two millimeter, it must be taking with us. This area, it must be taking the 80% of cytokines or gross factor, it will be here. So I must be taking this part. The first using of PRF in the world is to socket preservation. Yes, we can use PRF in the socket preservation. We, all of us, knowing there is different type of bone graft. It is autograft, it is taking from the same individual, and allograft, it is taking from the same species, not the same individ individual. And the xenograft, the most common use all the world, it's taking from another species. And the alloplast, it is totally synthetic material. The challenge to the surgeons to the implant in socket preservation is to preserve both quality and the quantity of the, of the osseous tissue. Sure. I must be preserved for the quality and the quantity, not only the quantity. I'm speaking here about the quality of the bone. This is example for normal extraction process. Normal extraction process for the first molar and normal bone resorption for the mandible. You can see the level of the bone here in the second molar and here in the first second molar. This is total, this is about 50% resorption of the labial bone. The alveolar bone changes after two extraction. This is normal process. And this is resorption of the bone. It will be limiting of the implant placement. This is the bone of the first premolar, that's the remaining bone for the first pre first molar area. This is normal extraction process and normal socket resorption. The causes of the residual alveolar crest bond effect about 71% due to tooth extraction. The majority of the bone defect after tooth extraction, about 71% after tooth extraction. 8% for the trauma and 17% for infections and 4% just only congenital bone defect. So if you're talking about the old methods for the socket preservation, for like this case, no LPL bone, and I cannot put the immediate implant, we need to make socket preservation, extraction of the tooth, curettage of the socket, and fill with the bone graft, mixing with blood, mixing with saline, then put membrane, then suturing, then waiting for two to four months. How much of this process cost? What is the cost for this process? What is the cost for the bone and the membrane? This is the cost, not for putting implant. No, it will be costing just before putting the implant. How much of this cost is? 
2.2 million annual pawn grafting procedure worldwide. This is mentioned. And in USA only, annual cost exceed 2.5 billion US dollars. This is mentioned by Amini at 2012. All the worldwide, the biomaterial device marketing in 2014 was projected 250 billion dollars. Wow, this is just only not for implant. It is a bone grafting procedure using of synthetic bone and using of membrane and uh, different material. It's not for implant, just only this too much cost for bone grafting material. We talk, when we're talking with for PRF, like this case, this is hopeless second molar in the mandible, normal extraction, a traumatic extraction. Then we're talking with PRF, put in the socket preservation, and after three months, we took this view. Do you see the difference? This is before extraction. The buccolingual hit about 11.5. And after socket preservation with PRF, we're talking about the buckling of 10 millimeters. How much the cost for this procedure? It's nothing. How much? How can P change the cost for the patient? This is the cost taking from the patient is nothing. If we compare this cost with the normal and regular procedure, for the bone graft and the membrane, it is nothing, it is no cost. Even after bone formation, we take a biopsy for the new bone it's forming and go to the histological analysis. It is, after histological analysis, it is the same type of bone for the patient. Take care, finally, we will be discuss that. The PRF in the socket preservation it will not improve the quality of the bone. It will not change the quality of the bone. Like if the patient coming to me with bone density like D4, if we make socket preservation with his patient PRF and put in the socket, it will not change the quality of the bone. It will provide quantity of the bone, not a change. So, you can see this before, and this is after putting the implant. You can see no point changed little, no point affected literally. Almost in the same patient, we can compare between in the same patient and in the same side. This is the first molar area extraction and normal healing for the socket, no socket preservation. You can see the bone, it will be collapsed. And here, the bone, we can be maintained. No DPR bone defect, it's the same. Even when we're talking for the panorama and the follow-up for radiographic finding for socket preservation with PRF, We can see this is immediately after extraction and this line, and this is after one month, and this is after two months, this is after four months. Yes, this is after four months. It looks like very nice. No changes. The case like this, all of us, knowing that the maxilla, it's very soft and maxilla, especially anterior, the maxilla. All of us know that if this patient is coming to our clinic with this abscess, everyone knowing that when we extract this tooth, will not be find more lethal bone to put implant in the future. 
think so. So all the procedure, it will be phone graph, membrane, tags, and waiting for four months, then putting implant. And in most cases, you will need added of bone also in the second stage when we put in implant. But with PRF, this is a different. We remove the tooth and we use the serum. Do you remember the serum? In the PRF tube, we talking about three layers. First layer is the serum. It is acidular plasma. Second layer is platelet rich fibrin. Third layer is red corpuscles. Here, in this case, we use a serum taking with syringe from the tube and after cure out of the socket, cleaning the socket and inject the saline, complete cleaning for the socket, then just in injection the serum the socket. If it is acidular plasma, then putting PRF is taking from the patient. What has happened after three months? This patient come to us in our clinic and after making the pumping, it will be fine. The diameter 5.5. I think it's perfect. 5.5 in diameter and 17 in length. I think it's good for putting implant in medulla after the infected center. Another case, we have maxillary first and second premolar. It is hopeless teeth. Non-rostropin, you see periapical infection related to the second and first premolar. This is complaining for the first premolar. Please notice the diameter of this bone. The diameter for first premolar 7.2 and for the second premolar 7.7. .7. What you expected if you taking normal extraction and you don't have any procedure for socket preservation and the waiting and this is in the maxilla and the waiting for two or three months what you think it would be happening what has happened i think this diameter of bone and this diameter of bone will be collapsed at least to 50 percent but after a traumatic extraction to preserve every lipial bone and the lingual bone very good curat, injection with saline first, then finally injection with serum. Don't forget, we can use the serum and inject with the socket before, just before putting the PRF. Then taking PRF and don't forget, the most important part, it is the junction between yellowish part and red cells part. The most, the 80% of the growth factors, it has the junction of the late PRF and the red corpuscles. So this is the most important part. It must be putting in the socket. Wow, after three months, you can see the bone. It's very nice, normal bone. If we talking about regular procedure, for the socket preservation, if we put artificial xenograft bone, one of the most common that I heard from our professors, Dr. Khaled Zekri, he says that if we put xenograft to socket preservation and after also integrated, and you will be see like this. He says that it look like bone but it is not a bone. This bone is also integrated with natural bone, but it's look like bone. It is not bone. This is natural bone. This is natural bone for the patient. This is his own bone. And what is the cost? Nothing. It is blood sample taken from the patient to put in the same patient the cost is nothing. Do you remember the diameter in first premolar? It was 7.7 .7 
and in second premolar it was 7.2. After the second, the first premolar, the diameter is almost the same, 7.6. But as a second premolar, the diameter increased. Really? Yes. This is a gross factor. This is cytokines. It may be increasing diameter, maybe. But I sure that it will never, never lose more than 2% of the pole. Now, this is normal bone, and for the patient, you can take surgery very easy to implant first and second premolar parallel to each other. It looks very nice. It's bone surrounding for the two implant. Yeah. The most important question here are we leave the PRF exposed in the oral cavity? And how can we use the PRF? I will put in the socket, just only put in the socket and leave exposed in the oral cavity. What do you think? The answer is never, never leave the PRF is exposed in oral cavity. It will be resorbed. It will be totally resorbed if we leave it exposed, exposed in the oral cavity. What will we have to do? It must be closed on the PRF. I think in the anterior and in most cases in the premolar area, it is so easy to elevate just only labial soft tissue and the lingual soft tissue and they make suturing to protect the PRF inside the socket. But it is not always happening. What we can do for the molar area and in large area of the premolar, I cannot elevate lithium and the lingual soft tissue to cover all this cavity. Even if you make scoring, we cannot do anything. So what will be happen? It must be covered by membrane to protect the PRF in the big socket, especially in the premolar and the molar. You cannot close by scoring or just elevating radial and palatal soft tissue to close on the PRF. You must to put membrane. What type of membrane? It's non-resorbable membrane. Don't forget. If we use so resorbable membrane, the resorbable membrane, it will, it will be transfer some fluids and some bacteria from the oral cavity to the inside the socket. We don't need that. So we will, we will be used non-resorbable membrane and I will be removed after two or three weeks maximum. Even in some cases of anterior, if the socket is big and the lithium and the soft tissue, it's not enough to collect together to protect the underlining PRF. We make put also the non-resorbable membrane and they make suturing to protect it. In this case, we compare the normal socket healing with the socket preservation in the same patient. We can see here the difference. This is socket, not socket preserved, and the regular bone resorption after tooth extraction. And this is after socket preservation. The same individual, one side with socket preservation with PRF, and the other side, the patient is coming to us after extraction without socket preservation. You can see about 80% of the bone lost. About 80% of the bone is lost. Here, about 80% of the bone is preserved. Another case, this patient coming to us with hopeless first premolar, 
there is no lapl phone there is a lapl phone and we can put the media implant in this case because the remaining of maxillary phone is good make a peritoneum to make a atraumatic extraction to protect the lapl phone after tooth extraction we can detect visually the position of the lapel phone to detect the position of the implant and after inserting of the implant we have a gap lapel gap we have two schools one of two one of the schools say that if the gap is less than two millimeter we will leave it not filled with anything but if the gap is more than two millimeter the gap here is about four millimeter in this case what we can do the school say that you must be fill this gap with phone filling this gap this gap is diameter with more than two millimeter and length it will be not less than eight millimeter this implant have a very good primary stability so we can use PRF, take it from the tube and the cutting with scissors to small pieces like this and put the PRF in the gap between labial bone and implant like this. First, you must put cover screw to prevent the insertion of the PRF inside the implant. After putting the old pieces of PRF and the gap will not take more, you can be removed with this cover screw and put final implant, final apartment implant, and we, now we will be immediate loading the primary stability and the cover with final apartment and immediate loading. In this case, coming to our clinic of the Cairo University have a very big large cyst take it from the upper right first premolar to the upper left first premolar you see the big cavity this is old cavity after mercifalization and the curettage of this cyst very well in the past if we're talking with surgeon about this cavity, he will be told you in this case we need to put about 12 to 15 grams of bone. Yes, about 12 to 15 grams of bone. And this bone is under resorption about 20 to 30 percent, it will be resorbed. And what is the cost of this? 15 gram of bone. I think it's very high cost. We fill this space with only PRF. We're taking from the patient five tubes and extracted basic stitch fibrin and fill the space from the upper right premolar to the upper left premolar with PRF. And the covering again and waiting for two months. Do you see? It's healing. It's normal healing process. It's normal bone. Four months. What is the cost? Nothing. It will blood taking from the patient and put in the same patient. Okay. Can I be use PRF in the registering? Yeah, this case we need ridge splitting to put to implant. Also, some schools say that if this space is less than one millimeter, it will be leaved and will be formed bone. And if this space more than 1.5 millimeter, it must be filled with the bone. Now, we fill this space with PRF only, not xenograft. 
not allograph phone, not Morse phone from the chain of the patient of the angle of the manifold of the patient. And it can be used the PRF also, sub periosteum to improve soft tissue healing in this case as a membrane. So showing this is upper three months. Another case, this patient come to our clinic need to restore central and bilateral. And there is very thin bone. And bone quality here is D5. Yes, the bone density, it will be D5. It's a very, very, very soft bone. We make computer-guided surgical stent to put implant in prosthetically driven way. This is an aesthetic zone. This is especially in anterior aesthetic zone and put computer guided. Uh, first of all, all of us knowing that the computer guided surgical stent, it is not meaning that I not need to open the flap. In some critical cases like this case, I need to make a computer guided surgical stent to detect the exact position of the implant in the aesthetic zone for prosthetically driven implant not to not open, to open and make prosthetically driven position for the implant. After first drilling, just on first drilling, you can see the cracks of the bone and the quality of the bone here is D5, don't forget. We make expander, put to implant, APR thread is exposed, APR thread is exposed. Now, we put bone graft, genome graft. This is mixing with serum. Okay, in this case, we need a membrane. Of course, we will take a membrane and cover all of this with membrane. We don't pay for membrane now. Just only use PRF as a membrane. Yes, of course, it is fibrin cloth. It's perfect membrane. Now, we use PRF as a membrane to cover all implant and xenograft material. This is before, this is after, this is before, this is after. Another case, come to our clinic, this patient has 36 years. You see clinically, he make a bridge from second premolar, upper second premolar, right, to the upper left second premolar. And clinically, the soft tissue and bone, it's very weak. After we make complaining, you see the diameter of maxilla, 2.9, 2.4. How we can do? How to manage this case? We discuss with the patient, with the patient to tell him this case, is need a very big, large amount of bone to increase the quality and the quantity of the repair bone. You need to put here for implant minimum. So we talking with the patient to take a bone graft from iliac crest. The patient is accepted the idea and we do take the iliac crest, which is very compact bone from the patient and we make the decortication for the pre-maxilla and the maxilla and we can modify the iliac crest bone to adapt lipidity to this maxilla and after that we fixation with the screw but after fixation of the screw we will be like this space between this iliac crest and previous maxilla. In the old school, we we'll use about 10 grams of bone to fill this space, and it must be covered also with compact, this iliac crest bone, with bone xenograft and the covered by membrane. Only to use now to fill this space with PRF and cover this all lipial graft bone with PRF as a membrane. There is 
difference between using PRF as a train or filling the space. We'll discuss that later. Fill the space with PRF between the iliac crest and the radial maxilla and put the PRF from outside as an entrain. Yes, this is outside as an entrain. Suturing. This is after four months. No xenograft, no allograft, just only from taking from area crest and the normal bone formation. This is after four months. This is before the diameter 2.5, 2.4. It will become to 6.9 and 8.2. Can I be use PRF in sinus lifting? I think so. In this case, the patient coming to our clinic, missing first and second premolar, and need sinus lifting here. We put with a computer guided surgical stand to make interlamination by canine. First drill, second drilling, then using osteotome to elevate the sinus floor. We just use the osteotome to elevate the sinus floor. After elevation to the suitable lens, we taking the PRF and the cutting the scissor into small pieces like this. Then fill the space with small pieces and be sure it will be go to the sinus floor and impact it then with the peritome. We use this peritome to impact PRF inside the sinus. Then putting the implant. This is after four months. Yes. Now we're talking about using of PRF in the soft tissue. This patient coming with the remaining root in upper right central. Little bone is found with compine. We're making the incision, patella severe incision to restore the aesthetic zone and extract the remaining root and put the implant. This is the patella severe incision. Here, the space very small, not filled with any grafting material or TRF. This is the patella sitting incision to preserve the patella in the aesthetic zone. This is in plan after OC integration. It's good, good as OC integrated, good as in plan. But what about soft tissue? This is defect, soft tissue. Can you see this defect? Yeah. Yes, it's not good literally. It have a defect in soft tissue literally. What is happening? In the second stage, when we put healing cooler, we just elevate the split thickness flap and elevate and the separation between peri leave the periosteum in contact with the bone and elevate just only the epithelium and the subepithelial tissue. We make a split thickness, leave the periosteum in contact with the bone, and release and elevate the epithelial and the sub epithelial tissue. Then fill this space with PRF and suturing. This is after two weeks. Do you see the difference? Do you see this is totally soft tissue? This is soft tissue. This is after two weeks. It's healing. You see? This is before. This is after. This is before. This is medial defect in the soft tissue. And this is his normal contouring. No graph taking from the palate of the patient, no connective tissue graph, 
the main problem after taking the graft from the palate of the patient, the patient is coming to your cleaning, suffering from severe pain in the palate. It's not suffering from the site of the surgery anteriorly. No, it's suffering from severe pain from the palate. And this pain will be took a lot two or three weeks. This is suffering from nothing. It will be take blood sample from the patient and put here in a, sp in a split second scrap and will be dramatically changes in the soft tissue control. This is upper restoration. Another case, this case come to our clinic is asking for laminates, upper and lower. The main problem in aesthetic, this metal shadow of the implant, this patient have implant in upper right and bilateral. And he talking for this metal shadow for the implant. And he asking for demasking this shadow. And in the other side also, she have to implant upper right, lateral and upper left. We make X-ray for this implant. It also integrated. What is the decision taking? In this area, the bone is very weak. I don't recommend this implant is also integrated. Well, in the very weak area, in the lateral, I don't recommend to remove the implant and uh, putting bone graft and putting soft tissue graft all of this to re-implantation at this area. So we take decision to improve this just on this soft tissue. The implant is also integrated well. We make the same technique. It is doing splitting of the flap. This lancet is coming between periosteum and supraperiosteal tissue, leaving the periosteum in contact with the bone and elevating the epithelia and epithelial tissue only. Put the PRF in this, fill all the space in all limbs for this area with PRF. On the other side also, both sides. After three weeks, yes, this is after one month. You see the difference after making the laminates. You see, after one month, this is before metal shadow of the implant, and this is after. Do you see the difference? It is totally masked for this metal shadow so after one month. What is the pain for the patient? No pain. No connective tissue graft talking from the palate. No repeal, no removal of the implant. Just to improve the thickness of the soft tissue. Uh, this is video for uh, using a PRF in soft tissue, but I think we will not have enough time. How PRF it's working? We must to know how it's working. The PRF is containing mainly from gross factors, three main parts of gross factors. First gross factor is called the transforming gross factor P. The transforming gross factor P, it is the most powerful fibrous agent among all cytokines. It is complete system for fibrin clotting, just to make, to make a large, very large matrix, very closed matrix to entrap what? To entrap the cells, cells of what? The other factor of PRF, it released from platelets, is called platelets-derived gross factors. What is the meaning of platelets-derived gross factor? The platelets-derived gross factor, I think it is the most important factor of cytokines. It is stimulate for mesenchymal cells. 
what is means by undifferentiated mesenchymal cell. It stimulate to migration in this area. To migrate in this area, the undifferentiated mesenchymal cells. And after it coming these cells from the blood, it will be entrapped in the fibrin clot. It's formed. What will be happen? These undifferentiated mesenchymal cells will be detect the defect in this area. What is the defect? There is tooth extraction. This is defect in the bone. So it will be a change to the osteocyte and the osteoplast. We're talking here about thousands or millions of the cells of undifferentiated mesenchymal cells. It will be migrate due to the presence of platelet drive growth factors. This growth factor, it will be stimulate the migration of undifferentiated mesenchymal cells by million in this area to detect the defect what's happened. If the defect in the bone, these undifferentiated mesenchymal cells will be changed to the osteocyte and osteoplast. If the defect in the soft tissue, these undifferentiated mesenchymal cells will be changed to the soft tissue cells and entrapped in the fibrin clot, which is formed before. But these undifferentiated mesenchymal cells need to proliferation and the survival, so it needs for food. The third growth factor released from platelets, it's insulin-like growth factors. It represent the food and power supply for the cells. All it is a system coming from God. It's very big matrix to entrap inside the undifferentiated mesenchymal cells, which will be differentiated later on to the, the same type of the cells that it present in contact. And the proliferation of this cell need insulin-like factors, growth factors, need a food, no need to proliferate. So we entrap the cells, undifferentiated millions of undifferentiated mesenchymal cells to detect and will be changed to the same type of the cells of the detect, which bone or soft tissue and to proliferation, it needs to an uh, insulin-like growth factor like this. So we're talking about three main growth factors, transferring growth factor, and the platelet drive growth factor, and insulin-like growth factors. This is a photograph for the function of PRF and platelet growth. Again and again and again, never to forget the 80% of the growth fat, it formed in the junction between yellowish part and reddish part. This is junction, it must be taken in all using of PRF, 80% of growth factor in this part. Don't forget, it must be taking this part with you in using PRF. Don't cut in here, you must be taking about two millimeter of red corpuscles with you. The PRF is coming with condensers. The condenser, it will be controlled the thickness of PRF. If we use the PRF as a membrane to cover the xenograft or aerograft material, you need to control the thickness as the membrane. And if we use, to use PRF in soft tissue, we can control the thickness. This condenser is coming with machine of PRF to control the thickness if we use as a membrane or in soft tissue. But if you use in socket preservation, you don't need this condenser to control the sickness. Now, we're talking about advanced PRF. What is the advanced PRF? Take care. It is the same procedure and the same blood sample taking in plant tube, 10 millimeter tube, which is immediately diffused. But the difference in speed and the time. The speed here is 1080 RPM. The speed was in regular PRF 3000 RPM. The time here, eight minutes. The time was in conventional PRF is 13 minutes. What is the difference? The difference mainly in the regular PRF, we have serum. If we mix in with bone or inject it in the socket, 
the fit socket. And this is, is a small part of PRF, and this is corpuscles. But in advanced PRF, decrease the speed and decrease the time, we not have a serum and increase the size of PRF clot area. In the advanced PRF, if we use the, as a socket preservation and you don't need a serum, we not inject the socket into the socket, we will not mix with the phone, you don't need this serum, so it can be used as advanced PRF. If we need large amount of PRF, as I mean brain, not needed the serum, you can use advanced PRF. Now, we can compare between advanced PRF and regular PRF. Regular PRF, the speed is 3000 RPM, and the time is 15, and advanced PRF, the speed 1,080, 800, and the time is eight minutes only. Thank you, doctors, for your listening. And now, uh, anyone have a question? Thank you, Dr. Ahmed. Thank you very much. It was a wonderful session. We have uh, two questions. Oh, can PRF itself be used as a bone graft or should it be mixed along with the synthetic graft for socket preservation? Yes, we're talking that uh, the PRF not improve the quality of the bone. This is very important part. If the patient is coming to you with quality of bone, bone density like D2, uh, it's, you don't need to mixing the PRF with xenograft in socket preservation. Just only you put the PRF and you will be ensure that the, the, um, the quality and the quantity of the bone, it will be formed as the same quality and the quantity of the patient. The same bone, the same quality. But if the patient coming to you with bone quality is low, bone density D5, if we use only PRF, the same bone quality it will be forming. The bone quality it will be also D5. So if you need to improve the quality, the quality of the bone, you must be mixing PRF with bone graft, xenograft. Thank you very much, sir. Next question. Can PRF be used as a bone graft with rich splint technique? Yes. Uh, we make sharing with uh, one case, rich splitting technique. Uh, in, in our lectures, we send the one case from A to Z. We can be use PRF in rich splitting technique and fill the space. Uh, the key of using of PRF is must be in contact with same type of tissue. If you need to PRF to form bone, it must be contact from all the surface by bone. If we need PRF, it is undifferentiating the chymal cells and they need to differentiate to the new cells. So if we need to differentiate to the bone and to differentiate to form a bone, you must put in all surrounded in area, surrounded all by the bone, just like socket preservation. If we need to these cells to differentiate to the soft tissue or connective tissue, sub epithelial tissue, so we make a split thickness flap to separate periosteum from the superficial soft tissue and put the PRF between two different, two same type of soft tissue. So the PRF will be formed also the soft tissue. Thank you, doctor. Last question. Can PRF be used with allogenic bone graft material like perioglass? Yes, uh, you can be used with it. All right, one more question, doctor. I think this is the last question. Yes, you can. More question? Yes, one more question, sir. Just one minute. If we just preserve the socket wall with PRF only, in this scenario, what will be the rate of bone healing? Uh, the bone healing, it will be dramatically 
you never expected the bone healing if you use only the TRF to socket preservation. Um, I swear the changes in the socket after extraction, if you take measurement for compim for the socket before extraction and after using PRF for socket preservation, and don't forget, never expose the PRF to the oral cavity, never expose to the oral cavity PRF. If it exposed to the oral cavity, it will be totally resorbent, not, not, not function at all. So if we take measurement for the socket before extraction by compim and using PRF for the same socket preservation for the same tooth, it will be see after two or three months by compim distance, the changes will be less than, less than 5% in, in paculingual changes. It will be dramatically healing. Mm -hmm.